Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com and I'm here to make uh, as quickly as possible uh, the second vinyl update video um, and I finally got the, the album in the mail I got a bunch of albums I'm expecting the mail still and pre-orders and stuff like that and there's some that I still want to buy but anyway the album I was referring to was Dredge's Catch Without Arms one of the best Dredge albums and I just noticed uh, it, it was, this is this pre-order 10 year anniversary although it's now 11 years about in May but this uh, book is just terrific this artwork book that I I'm assuming Drew um, who let the bass player made but yeah this is this is quite a piece this is I mean, the, the, the original Catch With An Arms book had some, some of this stuff but it's so much more in detail when it's blown up like this large um, but yeah, this is just one of the main, one of the, the cool things about this record, um, or this release rather, uh, let's see, I can't really have the time to, to go into detail, uh, show up all of it, but these are a lot of the different songs, Not, I don't think every song is on here, but a lot of the different, the artwork for each, for a lot of the different songs on Catch Without Arms, and I talked about it in my Dredge Random Artist Features video, but, uh, you know, this album is filled with catchy, melodic songs. But yeah, look at the green stain. It's like, I don't know if I would call it Granny Smith. Granny Smith. Granny Smith. Granny Smith apple green, the way I've always pictured the cover art. That green color, but um, it's a cool looking stain, at least. Um, and uh, yeah, no, I like, you know, Hung Over on Tuesday, Sang Real, um, Zebra Skin. Ode to the Sun, you know, they're, they're, you know, their most well-known song, Bug Eyes, is on this record. Uh, Planting Seed, Matroshka, um, Not That Simple, and it's just, I think this is a co really cool pressing. Um, out, on the first, out on vinyl for the first time. Oops, that's not how it goes in, but, well, I'll just go on. So, in the interest of time... I picked up, or I found, and then picked up Coheed and Cambria single Welcome Home from, uh, of course, Good Apollo 1, my favorite Coheed and Cambria record. Um, it's a 7 inch. I don't know how rare this is, but, you know, anything that's a, from a band I like that's on vinyl, uh, it's related to music that I like from them. You know, this is probably Coheed and Cambria's most well known song, too. And I, I don't have uh, I don't have Good Apollo One, of course, on vinyl. I'm not sure it's even been issued on vinyl at this point, but it will be. The belief is because in Keeping Secrets, which is the other Coed and Cambria record, got reissued or reissued or maybe issued for the first time. I think it's a reissue. Um, and I I actually saw this at Cheapo and they wanted quite a bit of money for it, and so I decided to wait and I ordered it online. I saved myself at least. Five, maybe ten dollars but yeah in keeping secrets the album that came before good apollo one in 2000 i want to say 2004 2003 or 2004 um and i like this record a lot it's it's very catchy it's uh, got a lot of extended tracks that kind of thing and it's really one of what i would say two great coheed and cambria albums the other rock records i don't consider great but um never been able to get fully into for various reasons but um, but these this one and especially good Apollo one the album that followed are just just excellent um, specifically 2113 of course the closing track which references rush or is it kind of a, a tongue-in-cheek thing to, to prog and rush um, favorite house Atlantic is a, is a favorite it has the track list on the the jackets and stuff like that of course which is hit and miss, it seems like, with a lot of vinyl. <sighs> the crowing. Uh, a lot of the, just the hooks on this album. You know, man your battle stations, you know. Da, 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 da. I could probably talk more in depth about this and especially go to Paul 1 at some point, but I'm not going to since I'm up against the clock. Um, then, another record that I... Wanted for a while on vinyl, and I guess also maybe been issued originally, and then was out of print, and then came back, and it could this this could have been some kind of anniversary, although 2006 would be like the 10 year anniversary. This is Protest the Heroes debut album, 
Kezia, I call her Kezia, but most people call it Kezia. And this is really, a, like Code and Cambria, one of the only records I really love from Protest the Hero. Although I, I like a lot of their other, I like a lot of their other songs, including their more, more most recent album, which I'm blanking on. But look at the red stain on this sucker. This is this is their best record to me. It's not even close, though. Um, just in terms of the production, the cymbals sound fine. Even though it's their debut album, production sounds the best on this record for some reason. The acoustic passages I've always find found to work best with uh, the the female singer that I'm blanking on, Kelly something Kelly. Um, and this doesn't even have a track list, unfortunately. So you're kind of uh, you're kind of uh, listening to this blindly, but. Yeah, you know what? We all know the track list. We can find the track list online. And it's sad because I actually still have my jewel case, but I don't know what actually happened to the actual physical CD that I had. But Protest the Hero is not a band I've talked about much on video, but I was pretty into them a few years ago when this album and the album that followed it, um, uh, Fortress we're getting a lot of buzz. Their most recent record, not Scurrilous, that was the one that followed Fortress, um, I think, but the one that came out in 2013. I thought that was kind of a nice comment, and I'm just spacing on it, but a little bit like Between the Barry to me, though, and that, and the bass player left Arif, unfortunately, but I still think, I'm not sure if they're ever gonna put out a record this good again, because this is nearly a five-star record to me, but, um, Oh, man, it's it just this is ter it's a terrific album. The energy, the riffs, it is sort of progressive metal with some sort of extreme moments, but uh, not as extreme as Between the Barrier to Me. Although I always kind of saw them as sort of Between the Barrier to Me, like a second option for Between the Barrier to Me fans, I guess. Or they're similar and not similar in a lot of ways. So, but the final record I'm going to show on this update is. Another long awaited. I saw this record a number of years ago at Cheapo, and they wanted. At least, at least fifty or sixty bucks, maybe more for it. This is Jeff Buckley's sketches for my sweetheart, the drunk, which is it came out in hundred eighty gram at least, and it's a triple. I mean, it's a, it was a double C album when it came out. It's obviously posthumous, and it's really just demos, but a lot of them are really well mastered, and the writing still is very polished. Even though I'm sure if Jeff had been alive to actually see these come out, they would have been the arrangements and the recordings would have sounded a lot different, but um, as far as my favorites on sketches, which is again, they came, this came out I think in 1999, like two years after Jeff died. And it talks about that a lot in this little write up from this Bill Flanagan and then Jeff's notes and stuff like that. But um, I always think of this album for like two or three songs specifically, even though it's a double. I mean, besides the, new, the Back in New York City, really unusual cover of the Genesis song Back in New York City. Uh, New York, New Year's Prayer, I believe it is. Not New York. New Year's Prayer. Uh, Nightmare by the Sea, and then Vancouver. Those three are haunting. But there's a bunch of other just, just excellent tracks on here. Haunting, haunting would be a good word to put them. Um, sort of uh, dreamy, uh, with satisfied mind. I can't remember if that's a cover or not. We got some pictures of him. Mary Guibert, of course, Mother's Message. I think this is actually an issue that came out in like 2013 or something, a reissue, but I mean, I, I only saw this the one time at Cheapo, and it was so expensive, but I really almost regretted not buying it that day. Um, and I love Jeff Buckley. What is it? Um, some of the stuff on the second, was the second CD, the second half, or it's a little more out there. Jewel Box is another one that I like. Your Flesh is So Nice is kind of a almost creepy but also seductive song you can see the the jackets and the, uh, the the photos and stuff like that sky is a landfill the opening track is another one i like everybody here wants you there's a documentary actually called that the bbc made a number of years ago nightmares by the sea there's nightmares by the sea there's two different versions i guess on this but yeah you and i of course jeff buckley's the, the state just put out a compilation, which also was included on vinyl, called You and I. But, yeah, I've wanted this for a long time, and it's really great to finally have it on, on vinyl. Even though it's not a gatefold, and it's a triple. But, so it's kind of, it'd be kind of a bit of an undertaking to listen to the whole thing. You'd be flipping sides a lot, but the fidelity sounds good. And just to have another Jeff Buckley album, 
on vinyl. I'm not sure if I'm ever going to get in you and I, or you and I, not the Yes song, but <laughs> you and I. I may or may not, but anyway, that's about it. But yeah, these are all <laughs> records I'm glad I finally acquired. Um, and uh, I don't know if I've got some more stuff coming in the mail. I'll, I'll do another one soon, but thank you for watching. Please post the comments, any vinyls that uh, you've picked up recently, other albums, or, or what you may take on some of these records like Dredge and Coheed and Cambria. Thanks. Bye.